But one thing I really like about this season is that um, the shopping district and the starter town, where a lot of people are already, are next to each other. Yes, yes. And the... Uh... Not too far, it's just over this mountain yeah. here. Over the mountain, yeah. yeah. Should we go there? We should. What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today is our second episode of the ZetaCraft recap and we are going to be checking out all the starter bases on ZetaCraft so far. So there's actually kind of a mix on ZetaCraft right now. This right here is we're looking at the starter town. Uh, now a lot of people on the server have built in the starter town and then there's some people like me who have not been able to build in the starter town yet unfortunately but there are some really cool bases over here so we're going to check all these out and then we're going to head out to the bases outside along the nether portals and we'll check all those out as well. The first one we are checking out is from Bleecker and this is a crypt. Now I think this is a great idea for a starter base. Inside this crypt there's a tomb of course and also a storage room, everything you need in a starter base. If you want to see what that tomb specifically is, go check out Bleecker's videos. I think he's hilarious and he's definitely got a really cool starter base. The next one we are checking out is from Splashes in Puddles. Now Splashes is actually the one who built the giant rocket that we checked out in the last episode in the shopping district, but Splashes is working on this base as well. Now this thing looks absolutely massive, but what's really cool about this base is that it's not even complete yet. There's some huge expansions to this base coming very soon, so definitely go and check out Splash's video so you can see those because it is incredible. I've seen a sneak, uh, sneak peek of it and it's gonna be really cool, so definitely go and check that out. Now of course it's not gonna be up on the channel for a little bit, so definitely you'll have to wait a bit, but go check out Splash's videos just to see what's been done so far on these amazing builds. The next one we are checking out is from Backpack Streamer, and this one is a giant mushroom. I really like the look of this one, and it's kind of a huge entrance to the starter town right here. You kind of walk through from the other side, and on that other side is actually where the gaming district is going to be, which we'll see later on this season once everybody's set up with their own bases and wants to get going on that type of stuff. Next up in this mud hut right next to the mushroom, we have Hypnojo. Now we're not going to go inside many of these bases today, mostly to save on time, but also because there may be some spoilers of what they haven't shown in their own videos yet, so we're just going to be checking out the outside. Hypnojo's little hut looks so cool, I really love all the detail around this thing, it's so great. The inside is really cool as well, definitely a very cool build to start the season. Next up, we're going to check out Ricky and Time Architect Spaces, and they're actually going to give a personal tour for us. So this is what I call Sunflower Square, but in reality, what it truly is, is an almost exact block for block remake of Lakeview Manor from Skyrim. Lakeview Manor, that's the name of it. Yes. <laughs> so uh, as for myself, I needed to get my own little twist to it, so that's why I call it Sunflower Square, and you can see it's surrounded by sunflowers in a square-ish pattern, as you would say. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty squarish pattern. Took a little artistic liberty as we head inside. Um, the front foyer place, normally this is like the first house in, when you mm -hmm. are working with that mod, but instead this is where you can help yourself to some sunflowers. And then when we walk into the main room, you have the main kitchen table that you can go to, the fireplace, your balcony, the rooms off to the sides. So it is about as close to a block for block remake as you can make with Minecraft blocks. And technically in the back uh, tower, I believe it's supposed to be a library, but I went with more like a botanist kind of look with a mangrove tree in here. So that's adding a little Minecraft artistic liberty to it, but I think it really works for the build. If we head upstairs, I had asked Megateka to make me a Skyrim themed armor stand work, and this is what he came up with, which we're now calling Buff Ricky, I believe, <laughs> which is... I'm Time Architect, and welcome to my crib. Oh wait, I'm sorry, wrong show, wrong show. Oh, that's um, a natural <clears> show. <throat> <laughs> well, we, uh... I guess before we step in, let's just kind of take in a little bit of the outside. 
So the inspiration for this base was we, uh, Ricky and I are doing kind of a Skyrim theme, hmm. and while I didn't want to go for a direct uh, take from one of the the spots in the game, I did want to kind of keep the theme of like a broken down tower, and Skyrim always has all sorts of cool mystical trees. So I designed this up to be a rundown tower with a tree just like clinching to the side, holding on for what little life is left of it. And just kind of had a lot of fun with the design, layouts, the build palette, and general shape of it. Well, when you take arrows in the knee like we did, it you that's don't really true. have a choice. I think that's important for our viewers to see. Look at that. You guys have a limp, isn't Limping it? away. Yeah, uh, so unfortunately, I don't really have much to show for an interior. It looks like it's already somebody's moved in with a skull, but uh, it's just kind of the base floor here, having a very rundown feel to it. It's mostly a exterior build. Next up, we have Arizona Hobby Gaming with this incredible guitar build in the side of the mountain here. This is probably one of my favorite starter houses on the server right now just because it is so unique. I've never seen anybody build a guitar like this in Minecraft, especially using uh, the chains and the nether portal to add in those specific details. It looks so good. The nether portal, of course, gets him right inside of the base so he doesn't have to fly into the side of the chains right here, but it is still such a cool starter house on this server. Now we heard a lot from Ricky and Time Architect as they're talking about their starter homes in the starter town, but they are working together for the Skyrim theme this season and they've already done this incredible build over here. This is Aldwin from Skyrim and this, uh, if you've ever played Skyrim, you know this is like the big bad in Skyrim. He is basically the main quest line and this depiction of him is just truly incredible. There are so many details across this entire thing and the inside of this is actually a huge, super useful part of their base and we'll explore that in just a minute here. So obviously they've also built the other dragon in the shopping district uh, at the word wall if you saw part one of this recap and that dragon is amazing as well. This one I think takes the cake though. It's bigger and it's badder and the inside is a complete villager trading hall assuming I could fly in here but this thing is so cool they decided to actually build a skeleton on the inside of this uh, because when you kill a dragon in Skyrim you actually are able to collect dragon bones so they thought it would be a nice touch to actually add those dragon bones on the inside here but you can see they've also got a almost fully complete trading all here I'd say it's about 98% complete they're just missing a few villagers they have some double ones right now and need to just add in some uh, all the villagers so they have them all but this is such a cool build not only is the outside of this thing amazing the inside is a full villager trading hall which just looks so cool and I can't even imagine how long it took to get all the villagers inside of here next up we are checking out mindless and shadow gingers base but before we look at their bases we're gonna check out this pond here because over on mindless's channel they are adding fish onto or into this pond and you are able to actually name some of those fish so go check out mindless's video drop some comments down below of what you think some fish names should be and maybe it'll be added into this pond right here Mindless and Shadow Ginger though decided to build very similar houses. The exteriors and blocks used are pretty different, but the actual uh, structure of the bases are pretty much the same and they look really nice. These are really great houses to start off in. They have all the basic needs. You've got your storage, your bedroom, everything like that. And of course, I think the details in these just look really cool as well. And it would be very useful if somebody wasn't placing stray heads around the server and blocking up these stairways. Mindless's looks very similar though. Of course, if we ignore the redstone randomizer in front of his house as he's currently working on a project, we can actually head in and see the interior. The only difference between these two houses, other than of course the block pallets, is that Mindless has a basement down below as well for his storage. And if you'll notice on Mindless's walls as we walk around the living room, you're actually gonna see basically all of his first in Minecrafts. Uh, of course his first wooden pickaxe, pickax, first stone pickaxe, everything like that, which I think is a really nice touch to add into your Minecraft bases. And I'll actually be doing something similar in mine because I love seeing that inside of Mindless's. 
Next up, and very true to his name, we are checking out Boss Builds. Now, Boss Builds has built this beautiful, luxury, modern mansion over here. I absolutely love this thing. I think the plants and greenery that he put on it really make this space as well. Just those little detail adds so much to this. And not only that, one of my favorite details inside of this base is that there are some vehicles inside of here. And we're talking very nice cars. Lamborghinis, white Lamborghinis, and he even went ahead and auctioned off these vehicles as well so that you could be the owner of one of them. Uh, my, I myself, almost average, managed to secure one uh, of these vehicles and I'll be put in the driver's seat of it and have it uh, taken over to my base, but I think this is such a cool touch inside of here, especially with these shaders on right now. It really looks like a vehicle showroom floor in here, which I think is so cool. This whole base though is just amazing. I absolutely love the modern style and he did a great job of putting all of this together right here, even complete with an infinity pool right here, which is a great touch. And next up, we are checking out Guru. Now, Guru had one of the first bases over in the starter town here, of course, with this amazing semi truck that says Guru right on the side of it. And then, of course, Fluffy the Mammoth is here as well. Now, I really like this. It's a very small design, but really cool looking. Uh, he's got the storage room inside of the back of this semi truck here, which I think is amazing. And I really, really like the look of this semi truck. He did a great job of putting this thing together. Next up, we'll head up this hill in the starter town here, and this up here is MayaQuest base. Now, MayaQuest is an incredible builder. If you watched any of the ZetaCraft Season 1 tours, then you'll know that MayaQuest had an amazing uh, empire that he kind of built, a huge elvish land, and this right here is a such a cool starter house as well. So many different details and things throughout it, a huge tower, and even the floor is entirely made out of sculpt, which I think is really cool as well. Maya is so great at detailing and building different builds in Minecraft, and you can clearly see it here. He's done so much in this area with all the little details and everything, and this base looks so cool, especially from the outside as well. Right next to Maya Quest, we actually have Dark Witch. Dark Witch went ahead and built up a treehouse over here, using a lot of different woods in here. As you can see, this is the new mangrove wood, which I think looks so nice. You can also see this thing is primarily made out of the jungle trees to get the height on it and make this thing look really cool. I actually really like open concept treehouse designs in Minecraft. I've built a lot of these before for my own bases, and so this one really looks cool to me. I love the mangrove wood on it especially. Next up, back over towards the middle of the starter town, we are checking out Zame. And as you can see, Zame's got some anti-sunflower uh, flags outside of his base. That is because he is not part of the Sunflower faction and wants to show his disdain for it. We'll get more into the factions on the server later on throughout the season as more starts to be happening with them, which should be very soon actually. Zame loves to show off his wealth and you can tell because there are even diamonds inside of the floor here, which I think is just a great touch to really show how wealthy you are on the server. He even has a butler, which what more can I say there? That is just a display of wealth. You've got a butler and diamonds in the floor. You know, you've got a lot of really cool things going on and you even have just really odd rooms in your house because you never know. Next up, we have Alex plays Minecraft with this incredible terraform and build over here, just across uh, the kind of edge where it drops down into the deep dark down below. This amazing build is right here. I love all the different mud and warped wood, everything used in here. It's a great contrast in color, which I think adds a lot to this base. You go up the tower, you're gonna find more storage and everything. Overall, this base looks so cool and it's actually one of my favorite on the server just because of the mix up of colors with the mud, mangrove, warp wood, and copper on the roof. I think it all combines so well to make such a great base. That pretty much wraps up all the bases in the starter town though, so we're gonna go ahead, head out through the nether portals and find everybody else's bases. The first one is Drop and I'll go ahead and let Geek explain from here. Okay, almost welcome. Hello. Welcome is... to the mountain I made in one day at our <laughs> base. This is uh, the start of uh, the, the drop 
conglomerate base. Exactly. So drop us a membership of five people, which is Jewel, who is uh, at the base right now looking at a pie, I think. Uh, it's me, it's Cablecraft, it's Eisenrod and Mega Tega. Which is it's a big team to work together and it's a challenge to work together and figure out how to build together. But we're going with steampunk style. So uh, to start out with, we have a big mouse in here that I made uh, not so long ago. It took me one day. We have an automatic door made by uh, Cablecraft. And I'll, I'll give you the honors to press this button. Oh. I do like pressing buttons. It is amazing. So here we're going to build, and that's for next episodes, uh, a storage system. And Cable has a challenge for himself to make a storage system for every item in Minecraft that you can get. That is going to be a massive storage system, but it looks like you guys have plenty of room down here. <laughs> it's a massive hole, yeah. <laughs> It is a huge hole. <laughs> the first thing I want to show you is the bee and wheat farm. We made a steampunk design because we're going all steampunk. Flying machines, gears, everything. Ooh. And we made a design for uh, a bee farm and a wheat farm at the same time. Uh, Cablecraft came up with the redstone. I did the design of the build. Okay, so uh, this is a design from me. But I added a little bit of windmill design from Time Architect, who we saw uh, early in the episode. But this is design, and what, uh, what I wanted to do is just create a little factory, which expands pulling out farmland, and showing that we are organic at Drop. Organic? And we producing. definitely don't create waste. Yeah, honey, no, no, no. you know, real organic, really great for the environment. As, you know, just ignore that, but like, Oh, but this part, you know, really great for the environment. Drop has definitely been one of the most active groups on the server so far this season, and they all started from this little house right here. They basically all found each other and decided to just start working together to build farms and completely dominate the economy on the server. Now, how are they going to do that? Well, of course, by building farms. So if we fly around here, you'll see this is a dock area they're working on. They have a small iron farm going at this dock. This dock over here, which I think looks incredible, has a crane, everything like that going on. This actually has a few different farms inside of it, or I think two farms actually, a cactus farm and also a mushroom farm, and it looks so cool. That's of course not it though. They also have a massive sheep farm over here, which I believe has somewhere around 256 sheep. I could be getting that number slightly wrong, but it's something ridiculous like that. And they're selling all that wool, of course, in the shopping district. If we fly out over the ocean, we're also going to find a mob farm, a raid farm, an iron farm, and a shulker farm. They also have a moss and cobblestone farm as well. They are really dominating farms this season. And they have some really interesting designs as well. If we go and we take a look at the raid farm over here, the coolest part of this farm is not the actual raid farm or even the shulker loaders that they have going on down here. It's actually a small sorting system that they have, which is actually using the new mob, the Alley. Now, I don't know entirely of how this works, but you can see there are two alleys and a note block there, and they're doing some form of sorting for this incredible farm they have going. Next up, we are checking out Guru. Now, we checked out Guru's first starter home in the starter town, the semi-truck, but this is actually his base area, and this thing looks so cool so far. You can see here, it looks kind of like an Italian village, and it even has some farms on the inside, like this iron farm and some villager trading, and this thing is actually going to be super massive as well. He's only done one small quadrant of this base so far and he's got a lot more planned out for what's going to be going in this area so I'm definitely super excited to see everything is going to be building over here because the first little quadrant he did is so cool already. Next up Dark Witch has a really cool base going on as well. Her nether portal of course is one of my favorite things just because of the trees and everything around it. It's such a natural area and the portal itself is super cool as well decked out with amethyst and kind of uh, put up above that little pond there. 
There's of course a couple buildings over here already. Down here, this was the first house. And of course, there's some axolotl and frog sanctuaries down here as well to of course protect the new wildlife that we have in Minecraft. Even on the inside of this base, if you head upstairs, there's a couple alleys locked up as well because you never know when you're gonna need an alley. The main portion of Dark Witch's build is over here and there's so much going inside of here such as farms, villager trading, and everything just looks so cool. Different floor patterns, I absolutely love the interior of that base. Next up, over here in the end dimension, we're actually going to check out the Enderman farm as well, just because we had to repair our elytras during this, of course, but this Enderman farm was made so quick on the server and I didn't have to do any of it, which I absolutely love because I hate building Enderman farms. Next up, we are checking out Mindless's build, and this thing looks so cool. This is the pillar, and it's actually housing a huge mangrove tree farm on the inside. Mangrove tree farms are apparently massive, and since Mindless had one, he needed to cover it up with something interesting, so he went with this Indiana Jones-inspired build and went ahead and built up this massive pillar. Now, if you head through these trapdoors, you're actually able to see the inside uh, where the mangrove tree farm is but this thing is so massive and looks so cool and I really like all the decorations on the outside of it. Next up, Diosil has some major plans underway over here. He is going to be working on a massive desert pyramid which is gonna go right here. We've kind of got a layout so far but no actual build here yet because this is a massive project that requires loads of materials. And last up on this server today, we have almost averages base, my base. Uh, down there you can see I've got a moss and log farm and those are what fuel logs and hogs my shop over in the shopping district. And then my base is actually up on this mountain behind me right here. We'll fly out so you can see it now. And it's just kind of a castle tower design. Uh, with